If you create 10 different queues, they will have 10 different mutexes so they won't block each other. The push method is straightforward. It's almost a copy-paste of our previous producer logic. We take the value, log the mutex, move the value into the internal queue, and then notify waiting thread. Now, I want you to pay very close attention to the signature of this function, and we are passing a t-reference. You might be wondering, why didn't we just write a pop function with a t-return value? Why don't we just return the value directly like the standard stdq does? This is a subtle but critical design choice driven by exception safety. Let's imagine for a moment that we define this function as pop with a t-return value. Inside that function we would take the item from the front of the queue. We would call queue pop, which destroys the item inside the internal container. Then the function would attempt to return a copy of that item to the caller. Here is the danger. What if the copy constructor of t throws an exception during that return process? Perhaps the system is out of memory, or the object is complex and it fails to copy. If that happens, the function exits with an exception. But we have already called pop on the internal queue. The item has been removed from memory, but we have successfully deleted it from the queue. That data is lost forever. By passing a t reference, into the function, we change the order of operations. First, we wait for the lock. Second, we assign the front element to the user's variable. If this assignment throws an exception, the stack unwinds. Then, we exit the function and the lock is released. But crucially, we haven't popped the item yet. Only after the data is safely in the user's hands do we call q underscore pop. This guarantees strong exception safety. No matter what happens, we never lose the data.